Hello and welcome back. In the previous video, we talked about game engines and what they do. We also talked about the Unity game engine in particular and why we chose it. In this video, we'll talk in a bit more detail about writing code for Unity using C Sharp. So let's get right to it. Since a huge part of the content on this channel to date is Java related, before we even touch upon Unity, let's briefly talk about Java and C Sharp. Java and C Sharp have a lot in common. Both are multi-platform and rely on a virtual machine to execute the code compiled to an intermediate language. For Java, it's Java Virtual Machine, or JVM, while for C Sharp, it's Common Language Runtime, or CLR. If this sounds totally gibberish to you, you might want to refer to the video on Java and Java code execution. Next, both languages are object-oriented with strict typing, meaning as a rule, when you declare a variable, you need to specify its data type, for example, int or double. Both languages have this division of data types into value or primitive types and reference types. But in C Sharp, the line between the two is not as clearly defined as it is in Java. Again, if this makes little sense to you, consider watching the video we made on primitive and reference data types in Java. Next, visually, Java code and C Sharp code are very similar, and in some cases even identical. Look at the following examples. As you can see, there is no difference in class declaration and minor differences in the main method declaration. For instance, by convention, method names in Java are not capitalized, while in C-sharp they are. But again, this is not a strict rule, just a recommendation. Also, string in Java is capitalized, and it's capitalized largely because string is a Java class and follows the class naming convention. In C-sharp, string is also a class, meaning you can declare a string variable in C-sharp the same way you do that in Java. The lowercase string in C-sharp is an alias for the uppercase string, meaning in C-sharp they are interchangeable. I don't know what the exact reasoning behind having the lowercase string in C-sharp is, but to me personally, it seems logical because even though string is a reference type, in some cases, it is treated as if it were a value type. One such case is instantiation. You can create a string object both in Java and C-sharp using literals, some stuff inside quotation marks, while for other pure reference types, you would need to use the new operator. Next, the methods responsible for printing text to the console are different in Java and c -sharp, but even though the names are different, calling methods is the same. And lastly, small things of great importance. Punctuation, or separators, are generally the same in both languages, meaning curly brackets in both languages do the same job of defining scopes, and semicolons are used to separate instructions in the code. There are of course other similarities, but the point of this part of the video is not to do a comprehensive Java versus c -sharp comparison, but to give you a general idea of how c -sharp and Java are similar. Now, differences. One of the most pleasant differences is that c -sharp is less verbose than Java, meaning you can get the same result with writing less code. For example, Java has only one version of main method, which is that so much loved by everyone public study void main. c -sharp, on the other hand, has four. Meaning, if your main method doesn't do anything with a string array parameter named args, in c -sharp you can omit it. Not a big deal, you say? I agree, this doesn't look like a deal breaker. For one, you wouldn't have hundreds of main methods in your project. Then how about this? Remember member variables with public accessors and mutators that we used in the Tetris project? Something like this. c -sharp has the so-called properties, which is simply put a member variable with an accessor and mutator declared in a single line of code. Like this. Know that by convention, property names are capitalized in C-sharp. If you're not sure what this is all about, what accessors and mutators are and why use them, you might want to refer to the video on member variables, accessors, and mutators. All right, back to the point. To me personally, C-sharp is Java 2.0, simply because it's overall better designed, less verbose, and has some useful features missing in Java. This is not to say that C-sharp is superior to Java. In fact, it has drawbacks. Some of them are shared with Java, for example, performance. But again, the purpose of this video is not to compare these two languages, but to rather explain why most of your Java programming knowledge and experience that you got from this channel is transferable to C-sharp and Unity. And not only that, we actually believe that the Tetris series on this channel is a good intro to game making with Unity, despite the fact that Unity uses C-sharp. Meaning, this Unity video series is designed to be built on top of what we learned from the Java and Tetris video series. Alright, now let's go back a little bit to the part where I said that C-sharp has some performance issues. The good news is that many of those are not issues for Unity because the games that were made with the Unity eventually get converted to the native code of the target platform, meaning the C-sharp code that we write for Unity essentially stops being C-sharp code. You're full of tricks, wizard. Yet you never once used your greatest weapon. Now, 
more in Unity. The title of this video suggests that there are some differences between C-sharp and the C-sharp used with Unity. One, and perhaps the most prominent difference, is that C-sharp is used as a scripting language in Unity. What does it mean? Simply put, if you take the C-sharp code that you've written for Unity and try to run it outside of Unity, it will not run. In other words, the C-sharp code written for Unity is not an independent program and relies on Unity for execution. So what? Well, this one is more of a fun fact. Unity is a C++ game engine that uses C-sharp as its scripting language. And at runtime, the same object can have a C++ and a C-sharp representation, which among other things means that there is a memory overhead. In other words, it means that the games made with Unity take up more memory than they could have, which at the end of the day isn't something to be super concerned about. This is just a part of the price you pay for the convenience of using a game engine. Another thing is, because the C-sharp code that we write for Unity is executed by the Unity engine, there is no need for a main method. Yay! I mean, it's the engine part of Unity that launches a Unity game, so we don't, or rather can't, provide a custom entry point. Is this a big deal? I don't think so. Why am I wasting your time talking about this then? Just to give you an example, to explain differences between C-sharp and Unity C-sharp. Another not a big deal is the standard C-sharp logging methods. Console.write and Console.writeLine, which are analogous to Java's System.out.print and System.out.println. So Console.write and Console.writeLine do not work in Unity. Unity has its own console and to print something to it, you use a different class, debug, that doesn't exist in the standard C-sharp. There are some other funny things, for example, when null isn't null or when it takes Unity some time to add support for the latest C-sharp version, which is inconvenient, but in most cases not critical. Now let's talk about more noticeable differences between the standard C-sharp and Unity C-sharp. Since we cannot have a main method in the C-sharp code that we write for Unity, how do we instantiate classes and initialize objects? Well, there's a group of classes whose instantiation can be handled directly by Unity and you don't have much of control over how it's done. Now, if Unity handles class instantiation, how do we tell Unity what must be done when an object created by Unity is being initialized? Well, to let developers specify the code that must be executed at a certain point during runtime, Unity has a set of callbacks. A callback here is simply put a method with a predefined signature that you declare in a C-sharp script. The code that you write inside that method will be executed by Unity at a certain point in time, which is similar to event handlers that NetBeans creates automatically in design mode, or a main method that we have both in Java and C Sharp. One such callback is awake, which gets called on initialization and only once, which effectively makes it a constructor, but with some limitations. For example, the awake method doesn't take any parameters. Here's the list of all available callbacks in Unity, and I'm pretty sure you can tell that there's a lot of them, but you don't need to remember their names and at what point in time they get called. It will come to you naturally as you write code for Unity. What I do want you to remember though is just the fact that if you want some code to be executed at a certain point during runtime, we must place that code inside the correct callback. In this video, we're not going to talk at length about those callbacks simply because that's something we should do in practice instead of spending time just talking about it. Now, some of you might have noticed that a bit earlier in this video, I said that Unity handles instantiation of some classes. In addition to this, only some classes receive callbacks from the Unity engine. Those are classes that derive or inherit from one of the two built-in Unity classes, monobehavior and scriptable object. And no, we did not misspell behavior and monobehavior. This is how it is spelled in Unity. In other words, to integrate a custom c -sharp code into a Unity game, that code must be placed inside certain methods declared inside a class that inherits from either monobehavior or scriptable object. Speaking of inheritance, there are some syntax differences between Java and C-sharp. In Java, to have a class inherit from another class, we use the keyword extends. In C-sharp, we use a colon. Another difference is related to interfaces, but since we haven't really covered those on this channel so far, we are going to talk about that difference later. All right, so in this video, we went over some differences between Java and c -sharp, as well as some differences between the standard c -sharp and the c -sharp used in Unity. The main takeaway is that if you already know Java, but don't know c -sharp, it's not going to take you that much of time and effort to transition to c -sharp, because both languages follow the same core principles and have very similar syntax. Again, this video is a part of a new series on game making with Unity that we're currently working on. 
In this video series, we'll show you how to make a relatively simple 8-ball pool game and publish it to Apple's App Store and Google Play. The game has already been published and you can check it out on the stores. The links are in the video description. And if you get interested in learning how to make mobile games in Unity, then publish those games. And if you're particularly interested in learning how to make a pool game, stay tuned. This video series is designed for those who are not familiar with Unity at all, but do have some programming experience. The programming part of this video series is designed with an assumption that you have a good understanding of the material that has been covered on this channel. So if you're interested to see what we have to offer in this video series, make sure you have no major difficulty with what's covered in the Java video series on this channel. And this is it for this video. In the next one, we'll show you how to get started with Unity. So see you then. Bye.